Hey, y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacey with me. Shalom. Got Shadow Man out here, too. But in today's video, we want to come out and chat with you guys about something. Normally, we try to put up scripture to support what we're saying, but you can imagine how long that takes when everything you say, you have to put the, the scripture up on the screen to support it. Right. Well, in this video, we're going to be covering a lot, a lot of subjects real quick. And so we brought Shadow Man out so we can give the people something to look at as we rapid fire through these subjects. Okay. I jotted these down in my notebook here. And some of you guys may consider doing the same thing because, like I said, we're going to be covering a lot of various subjects here and we're going to be covering them really quickly. All right. All right. And, they are, and they're out of order, too. <laughs> I just was jotting them down. All right. Um, but we're here at the end of the spring festivals and we have a lot of new people that are coming in. And so they're going to come in with a lot, a lot of questions we could imagine. Right. So we're just going to chat about some of the stuff that they will have questions about. Okay. Like, for instance, how we're in a sabbatical year now. Yeah. We just started the sabbatical year, and guys, this is extremely important, even if you're not a farmer, because this is the year we're supposed to get our release. Now, exactly when this happens, um, there's some that believe it will happen in the fall, but we did a video not too long ago talking about how the uh, release is to come at the end of the year. So that could be sometime around this time in the year, 2024 or so mm -hmm. and guys don't write this down but mm -hmm. i personally believe that um things will start to happen pretty quickly at the end of this sabbatical year based on what i've learned in scripture um this could be our last chance to try to get this stuff right before we are put in a position where we are held accountable for this knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah, so before some of the big events that um, you've talked about start to happen. And the, 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 uh, the requirements that are on us are held accountable or are, are may do. We have to actually do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And whereas now we're kind of getting away with our sin and our errors and our mistakes, well, after this pole shift, things will change and mistakes that we make could actually cost us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to try to get this stuff right during the sabbatical year because we don't know what we have coming next year. Yeah. In the, the Jubilee year. The little mistakes that we've been making um, that we haven't been held accountable for can eventually uh, or could cost us our lives or that of our family. And guys, this is not an accident that we're so far off track as far as our understanding of what we're supposed to do. Um, we've had a lot of help getting on the wrong track and I say all of that to say don't worry if you find yourself in a very sinful state because we always do at the beginning and then we have to use the scripture and prayer and meditation in order to clean ourselves up or, or I should say in order to let him clean us up it's not our responsibility to clean us up it's our father's responsibility to show us what we have to do and it takes time you know, he we not expected to come and get rid of all of the sin in our life in one day. Right. That's actually impossible. It takes years to actually get this thing right. So what happens is over the next year, over the next years, we'll read scripture um, that will tell us what we are supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be living our lives, what things we're supposed to get out of our life so that we can be an acceptable offering to our father. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, like I said, these things are in random order. The next thing, guys, that I want to talk to you guys about, especially you guys that are new, is the, is the Sabbath day. That I promise you is the most important commandment in the Bible is the Sabbath day. If I had a pulpit, I would be banging on it. The Sabbath day, the Sabbath day, the Sabbath day. If you don't do nothing else, you have to get that right. The Sabbath day. If you can't get the Sabbath day right, you will not be able to get the rest of the commandments right. Your brain will not function properly somehow. I mean, I understand that's on a spiritual level, pineal glands and all of that. But somehow this thing has worked out. If we break the Sabbath day, we will break the rest of the commandments. Okay. So we have to keep the Sabbath day. And if we don't know when the sabbatical day is, if we work down for Mr. Charlie and we only get certain days off, sabotage those days if you get saturday off or sunday off only 
sabotage those days. It's not Sunday worship. It's the fact that that's the only day that you could take a rest day off. You have to take a rest day off. So what you're saying is that your body has to actually rest. We're, we are under a requirement by law, by biblical law to rest. And so if we only get one day off of work, well, that's the only day we can rest. Right. All of that to say, keep one day off. Take it off and actually sabotage that day. No working, no shopping, no leaving the property, no uh, playing uh, wife, husband and wife games, mm -hmm. no a whole lot of rules associated with the Sabbath day mm -hmm. that really focus our attention on rest and spending time with him on that one day out of the week. Right. I promise you, I'll say it again, that's the most important commandment in the Bible. You break that one, you're going to break the rest of them. And that brings me to my next point, and that's things that we can do that get us cut off. Okay. We did a video not too long ago. Yeah. Breaking the Sabbath day is one of the things that can get us cut off. Separate it from our father's people. Like excommunicated from the children from the children of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. We're no longer a part of this church because we can get ourselves cut off. And the the, the Sabbath day is one thing that we can do to get ourselves cut off quick. Right. That's mm -hmm. one of the first things many of us will do is break the Sabbath day right after the feast days are over. Right after the feast days are over, many of us will not know or pay attention to the Sabbath day and we won't sabotage a day and we'll end up working eight days in a row, which will actually end up violating the covenant, which will make us covenant breakers, which will mean that our life is actually in danger when it comes to this apocalypse that's coming up on us. Right. Obedience to these rules is what's going to save us. Mm -hmm. Don't let them church people fool you. You know, that's what they tell them down there. You know, you don't need the Bible. You don't need this. You don't need that. All you got to do is believe your heart. I promise you guys that it's not the case. I promise you it's not the case. We That Bible is there for a reason. If we didn't need it, why would he write it? Why would it be the most important book on the planet? You yeah, know? the laws are our greatest protection. That's mm -hmm. what they're there for. That's mm -hmm. why he wrote this, knowing that this apocalypse is coming, knowing that this pole shift is coming, he gave us instructions on what to do in order to survive. And so we have to... Um, um, read these instructions so that we know how to survive so we don't get ourselves cut off because if you get yourself cut off you're going to be on your own you're not going to have angelic protections to help you and this apocalypse promises to be the most horrific event that any human has ever seen any human even noah has not seen anything like what we are about to see and we have to have angels in order to help us just like noah did those angels built that ark for him he didn't build it they built it and they closed him in it. Well, the same with us now. The angels are building our ark. They're trying to get us in it and they're getting ready to shut the doors. But there are other things besides the Sabbath day that will get you cut off. Like birthday parties, like Halloween parties. Any pagan holiday is the worship of a pagan god and that's going to get you cut off quick. But there's other things like eating blood. If our meat is not prepared properly, Guys, we are eating blood and we will be harmed because of that. The, the scripture promises that there are blood hunting animals that we ain't never even seen before that lives out there in them woods that will be coming out to hunt people down after the apocalypse. And it seems to me that it's going to be hunting down those people who have blood in their system. Like if we've been eating blood, those gonna, the, the, these animals are going to be a little bit bloodthirsty looking for these individuals who have who've been eating blood so we have to stop we have to cook the meat properly get the blood out mm -hmm. whatever it takes mm -hmm. we've done videos on it you can do it with salt you can do it with water you mm -hmm. can do it with heat there's many ways you can get the blood out but you got to get the blood out before you eat it yeah and you've done like you said many videos on this so if they're looking for the proper way to do it they can find it in your videos yeah and then once we get cut off we got to check out that video because there was like 10 or 15 things that can get us cut off not everything gets us cut off. Not every sin carries the death penalty. Mm -hmm. But there are some that do carry the death penalty, and these are the ones that will get us cut off. And like I said, there was 10 or 15 out of maybe 600. So we want to check out that video to make sure we're not doing any of these things that's going to get us cut off. And if we do, that brings me to my next point. We can get baptized back into the system. 
That's the way our father has set this up. We can go through this spiritual cleansing, mm -hmm. a spiritual, this, um, what do they call it? Ritual bath is what the incense called it. Mm -hmm. It's basically a baptism. Even before John the Baptist, people don't realize that. No, I didn't. Even before John the Baptist came on the scene, the incense were doing a ritual bath. So what you're saying is if you find yourself in one of these situations where you are cut off, baptism is the way to get clean and back in the good, uh, guess you would call graces of the father. Right. That's what he did. That's the, the, we used to have to do a sin offering where you would put the blood of a lamb uh, on the altar and everything mm -hmm. to, to actually cover the sin. Well, our Messiah came on and he changed that blood into water. And so now instead of us having to find the blood of a lamb, we can actually bathe or take this ritual bath. In other words, we can get baptized and then we'll have a clean slate again. And once again, you've done classes on this We've as done well. Many classes on it. That's like we, that's why we're doing it right here in this rapid fire thing. Okay. The next point, like I said, these are out of order. Um, this is especially for the new people that are coming into this. Remember, guys, you are the first fruits. Let that sink in for a minute. Anybody who's hearing this video in 2023 is a potential first fruit. Or maybe they're a hater. I'm trying to find some way to, <laughs> to detract from our channel. But most of the people listening now are the early birds. We are the ones who our father has came to get early so that we can learn how to live within the law. So when we have this apocalypse, we some people will be ready. Some people know what to do. We ain't all got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have been already figuring it out. Like us, we've been on this for seven years. So we have a seven year head start on everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's what a first fruit means. And so when we have the apocalypse and there are people wondering, okay, where are we going to get water from? We know how to get water out of the ground. Right. And so where are we going to get food from? We know how to eat some of these wild vegetation and plants and trees and stuff that's growing out here. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to uh, get heat from? Right. Where are we going to get all of these things that we take for granted now? Where are we going to get those things from? Well, it is during this period that the people are learning this along with learning the law. Yeah, when those people, you know, during those times when you go out to kill the animals, just like you said, the first fruit will be the ones to say, hey, make sure you drain that blood. And yeah. so you won't, you know, yeah. lose connection with the father. Yeah. Those are the people that um, are learning this stuff now to be able to help the others. And because it could be just that easy. Here you are in a... In a distress situation mm -hmm. where you don't have much to eat and all of a sudden you are presented with an animal right the father brings an animal and puts him in your hand and allow you to eat it well like you said it's the levites that's going to come in and say yeah well you have to do this part to meet biblical requirements in this part and then it's fine mm -hmm. the father wants the blood he wants the kidneys and he wants the fat once you give him that, you can have the rest. But if you don't know that, you're going to be eating the blood and you're going to be eating the fat. And now you're going to be cut off. Right. And now you're going to be on your own trying to survive in this after apocalyptical world, which is going to be rough. Very important information this is. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that these first fruits, these people who are hearing this now, these first fruits, they have to be humble. Because they're going to look and appear different than the rest of the world. And the rest of the world, when they look different, when they look different to their neighbors, to their friends, to their loved ones, the neighbors, the friends, and the loved ones are going to pick on them. And if they're not humble, they're not going to be able to take that humiliation with humility. And so they're going to fight back and they're going to cry, making it to where their, um, their, their misery is sterilized. It don't count. So... What I'm trying to say is if you are a first fruit and you feel this pressure of these trip, these uh, persecutions and this treachery that's going to come up on you, it's going to happen. He's, uh, the way the Elohim work is they use the ones that are the closest to you to harm you. So it's going to be your wife and your kids first. So when you start to feel this, the way you get over it is to be humble. It's hard. I didn't take it from me. But it's important, and that's why I'm stressing this. We have to allow these things to happen. Just like the Messiah, when they was questioning him and putting him on trial, he sat there quietly. He could have put the king in his place and squared the king away with a few simple words. Mm -hmm. But that wouldn't have been humble. That, would have been, that wouldn't have been humility. 
So he sat there quietly and let them do what they wanted to do. Spit on him, smacked him, put a crown, whatever they wanted to do to him. He sat there humbly and took it. Well, he was the first of the first fruits and he was the example for us. They're going to do the same thing to us. They're going to spit on us, cuss. They're going to uh, slander our name. They're going to do everything um, to try to get us off of this path. And so the first fruits, the early, you got to realize that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you off of the path and back on the path for them. They want you back at the Christmas party. They don't want you at the Passover. They want you at the Easter party. And so that's what they're going to do is make your life miserable until you actually give in and acquiesce and come back over there with them. But that's going to be detrimental to you. I, I guess I ain't got to go into how they will actually harm you if you have put your hands on that plow. And decide you're going to take your hands off that plow and go back over there and play with them heathen. Don't do that. But my point is, is that the only way you will be able to make it through is to be humble. If you try to fight back, if you try to resist, if you try to talk back, if you try to explain yourself, if you try to explain the word, if you try to convince people that you're right, if you try to break out the scripture and point out the verses, it's not going to work. It's just going to get worse. All you could, we could do is like the Messiah did and then sit back. Be humble, let it happen, put our lives in the Father's hands until it's over with. That's all we got. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing on the list, guys, is scripture. We've been through first fruits. We've been through unleavened bread this year. We learned a lot. I know I learned a lot this year. Everybody seems to learn a lot. But one of the things that I learned is that the Feast of Unleavened Bread is all about scripture. Reading it, getting Anything that's contrary to scripture, anything that contradicts scripture out of the house, falsehoods, lies, misunderstandings, all of this got to be searched out of our house, our spiritual house, and moved out. And we replace that with the unleavened, unadulterated word of God. Well, we actually should continue that. Throughout this year, we should be reading scripture, the, the Old Testament of the Bible, the New Testament of the Bible. But then we have the Third Testament of the Bible, and then we have the Shepherd of Hermas. These are scriptures that we need to be um, listening to, reading. There's a lot of scripture out here that we need to get. But guys, you hear me tell you all the time, the most important book that we need to be reading right now is the Shepherd of Hermas. Now, there's some people going to choke on that, I know. They're going to say the Bible is the most important book. The Shepherd of Hermas is the book that was taken out of the Bible to hide that information from us. The information we need to actually live in the kingdom of heaven. The, the epistle of Barnabas was another book that was taken out. The epistle of Barnabas and the shepherd of Hermas. But these are the only two books that tell us how to make it in and how to survive in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the information in the shepherd of Hermas, you will not be able to live in the kingdom of heaven environment. You, you, you will have too much anger. You will have... Too much pride, too, too much, much pride, greed, too mm -hmm. much greed, mm -hmm. selfishness are things that will not survive over there. So what we do now is we read the Shepherd of Hermans often. That's the only book we're told to read often. It's like a chisel that chisels away different things, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things we'll be doing is listening to scripture. We can we can get the MP3s. We can listen to the scripture. Or we can read it. Consuming it whatever way is extremely important. That's one of the most important things we need to be doing is reading the scripture so we know so we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so we know what we're supposed to do. The thing is, they hid that book and took it out. So most people have never even heard of that book. Mm -hmm. They don't even know a scripture at all. The Catholic Church decided that they didn't want it in there. You know, the same people that are trying to preach that the Easter Bunny is going to rapture us away or whatever mm -hmm. took the book called the shepherd of Hermes out so we wouldn't have that information and so we have to get it and read it along with Barnabas Barnabas we only really have to read it one time but like I said the shepherd of Hermes it tells us in that book that we have to consume it often we have right. to read it often often and it also tells that if you do these things um, you will inherit the kingdom and inherit the yes. kingdom. Yeah. So it's, it's the it's a kingdom of heaven book. And I believe that's why they took it away is because they don't want the common man to make it to the kingdom of heaven. It's like they want to reserve it for themselves. So they got that information hidden. They're reading it, but they don't want to share it with the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Well, it's on in line. It's online. So find it. Consume it. 
All right, the next thing on here is talking a little bit about our religion. Now, there's a lot of people coming from the church world. And the first error that they're going to make coming from the church world is thinking that we are going to act like church people. Over here, if you want to call it a religion, which we don't, but instead of every week dressing up and driving down to a church, we clean ourselves up and spend our time at the house reading scripture and resting. Right. Instead of having holy pagan parties like Christmas and Easter, we celebrate the feast days, tabernacles, unleavened bread. Our language is simple. We use simple words. We just call them Father or Abba. No, it ain't a whole bunch of fancy words, fancy clothes and fancy this going on. If you came to our camp, which we don't really have a camp, but if you came around, you wouldn't really recognize anything that says that's a religious organization mm -hmm. because there's it's Dif different different methods. I just stress because a lot of people are coming out of the church world and they're coming over here and expect everything to be church like mm -hmm. like somebody was asking, was I going to go live for Passover mm -hmm. to do what? There's nothing to talk about mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to have any leavening. So there's no no preaching or anything that can go on. There's no big there's there's not supposed to be any honey involved so there's no big glamorous celebration where you're going to exalt the preacher or anything it's just a basic you do the thing there's not much words involved there's nothing to talk about it kind of almost seems boring to the churchianity people but for us it's just simple all we do is we make sure we're doing a sabbath day and the feast days right and we obey the scriptures so that we're doing things according to the way our father wants us to do it Right. right. Simple. And like I, and so I say that so that the people coming over don't think that we just quit. Hey, they was getting all excited to pass over. Now we ain't heard from them for a while. Right. Hey, hey, that's just the way it is. You know, we have our feast days, our most important appointments. And then the rest of the time we just live. Simple. And that brings me to a thing that we need to understand is the calendar. The sacred calendar. The sacred calendar is different than our regular calendar. And a lot, I don't want to pick on my brothers, but it's just like that when it comes to the calendar. We've been raised on the Gregorian calendar and we think that's the way it works. And so when somebody introduces a sacred calendar, the first thing we want to do is compare the sacred calendar to the Gregorian calendar, the one we're used to. And when anything seems different, we say no. This is the way it's supposed to work. According to the Gregorian calendar, the day changes over at midnight. Mm -hmm. So that's supposed to be the way it works on the sacred calendar. No, it's not. According to the Gregorian calendar, the year starts in January. Mm -hmm. Not on the sacred calendar. All of the calendar is different. And guys, I've personally been studying the calendar off and on for 30 years. But I'm going to tell you, over the last seven years, the one thing that I did that helped me out the most was when I set the Gregorian calendar aside and stopped trying to compare the two, pushed it aside, I stuck, oh, I literally stuck the calendar in a drawer and took it off the wall and put it in a drawer and concentrated on the sacred calendar alone. And that's what helped me figure it out. That's what helped me to understand everything about the Gregorian calendar was throwing me off. And so I had to push it away and learn the real calendar. Now, if you watch our channel, now we can actually put up uh, uh, calendars that have both of them combined. But I wasn't able to do that until I concentrated on the real calendar and then went back and compared it to the Gregorian calendar, not mm -hmm. the other way around. Right. Our calendar is first, then came their made up calendar. But if we look at it backwards, like we learned the man made calendar first, now we want it, now we want the sacred calendar to look like it, you're gonna stay confused. Right, like, trying to make the um, sacred calendar line up with the Gregorian calendar opposed to um, just following the sacred calendar as it is. Um, yeah. We're definitely trying to make it line up yeah. for our convenience a lot of the time. Yeah, and guys, we take this stuff for granted now because we can pop up on a YouTube channel and find people that will tell us when the feast days are. But is the YouTube going to be around? We don't know. 
And it could come a time where we have to figure this out for ourselves. And so we have to spend time learning the calendar. How it's real simple. The, the, the year starts with the first new moon after the equinox. It don't get no simpler than that. Each month starts with a new moon. Every time you get a new moon, you get a new month. It don't get no more simpler than that. But we have to learn it so that if one day, especially if we are Levi, we can be called upon to help people know when the feast days are because you can't miss them. Passover, you can't even miss that by a day. That's why you give them two opportunities in a year because you don't you, you got you got a half hour to get that right. One half hour, not even a whole day. You got twilight. And if you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing in that half hour to an hour, you miss Passover. So you have to get the calendar right. So we have to study the calendar so that when they turn off the Internet, we're not completely blind and not know when the Sabbath days are and the feast days are. No, we know how to use the celestials in order to calculate our Sabbath day. And so we can keep it going, right. not get cut off by missing a feast day. That's one of the easiest way to get cut off is to not do a feast day on a proper day. So learn the calendar, guys. Learn the calendar. The next thing I want to talk about is charity. Now, this is probably the most important thing on the list. Charity. Doing charitable deeds is the number one thing that we need to be doing. I know I said that the Sabbath day is the number one rule. That's only once a week. Charity we need to be doing every day. Charity. One of the most powerful things you have is your prayer. Mm -hmm. And you can pray for people that are in need. Pray for people that are hungry. Pray for people that are in war. Dying in these diseases and, and earthquakes and famines and all of that. We can pray for these people and that counts as our charity. Mm -hmm. But there are other materialistic charitable things that our Father presents us with. Every time we go to the, around and somebody asks us for something, that's a test. Our Father put that person there to see what we would do right in front of the liquor store. He's sitting on the ground looking all dirty and smelly. Don't ask us for some money. We're being tested. Are we going to judge that person and say, you're not worthy of my charity? Get on off of here. Well, when our calamity comes on us, that's going to happen to us. Instead of somebody helping us when we need it, all we're going to receive from them is judgment. Mm -hmm. No, guys, in this period we're in now, this year now, I told you the importance of the sabbatical year and how things could change. We need to concentrate on charity, taking every opportunity to do every charitable thing we could do. Every time somebody asks us for something, we need to recognize that as our father putting them there in order to help us. That's helping us. If somebody come and say, can you uh, give me a ride? Mm -hmm. That's helping us. Mm -hmm. Can you give me some food? That's helping us. That's our father helping us by putting these charitable op opportunities in front of us. And we have to take advantage of them. We have to do this even more so that makes sense because charitable deeds cover sin. We don't know all of the sins that we've committed in this life. We're just now learning about these rules and stuff. We can't go back to our childhood and make up for things we stole and things we did wrong. But we can do charitable deeds and it covers that stuff up. Mm -hmm. Stuff that we don't even know we did. Stuff we may have did in past lifetimes. We mm -hmm. can do charitable deeds in order to cover it up. And we need to get on that. Like I said, every opportunity, everything we can do in order to show love for our brother, praying for him, giving him stuff, feeding him, uh, making sure they're all right. We have to do everything we can. Right. Put effort into it. You know, yeah, work into it. Don't just do it half heartedly. You know, like you said, just throw the person who asked you for some money, just throw them, you know, a couple of dimes or whatever. You know, give them, you know, some of your best. Give them yeah, those give nice them clothes. Yeah, give them those nice clothes. Yeah. Have. Because what's going to end up happening is we'll have the pole shift, we'll have the earthquake, and all of these nice clothes that you've been saving up are going to be destroyed and useless. Mm -hmm. and then nobody's going to even want them then. And now you're going to have a mind, oh, I need to do some charitable deeds. So now you ain't got nothing to give. Your house is gone. Your clothes are gone. Your money is useless. Your electron, everything is useless now. You don't have anything to give. And your opportunity to, to have done it in the past is squandered and gone. That's so I'm my point is now, guys, do charity now. Pray, pray, pray. Every day, pray for somebody. Every opportunity you get to give somebody something, give it to them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it's very important. I have a little testimony about how we um, we had the opportunity to help 
um, a cousin of mine and her children. And I was just darn straight, did not want to do it. I did not want to be babysitting. Uh, you know, people were telling me, you know, charge her and all that kind of stuff. But you were pretty adamant about, no, we are going to, to help her take care of these children. Well, my heart was very grudge, grudgingly doing it. I did not want to do it, and I'm sure it showed in my actions. But I did it out of obedience to you. And now I'm just in absolute love with her and her children. And it's just, I can see how it has blessed me, not materially, but spiritually, in, in helping her um, with her children. Yeah, and that's an opportunity. Like I said, the father put her there, put those children there. Your cousin put her in that environment to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, your cousin is doing you a favor. Right. She got she can pay for a babysitter somewhere else if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. But by the but what the father has done is put it on her heart to ask you to help you out. So now that you can get the credits that you need to cover your faults, mm -hmm. giving you a chance in order to live in the kingdom of heaven. Right. Right. So charity, guys, charity, charity, charity. The other thing is prayer. Mm -hmm. We got to learn how to pray. That's the one thing, especially you guys coming from churchianity world. You got to learn how to pray. His name is not God and he does not. Well, I ain't going to say he doesn't answer to it, but he don't like to be called that. If you're in a stressful situation and you about to get hit by a truck and you say, oh, God, help me. Yeah, he's going to help you in that moment. You want to call him the J word? Yeah, he's going to rush there because he recognizes your heart and he's going to come in and do it. But guys, when I'm sitting around and everything's peaceful and everything's on the normal and I got a little time to think about what my prayer is I don't want to be calling him God you know I want to call him father right. father is important to our prayer that's why the Messiah gave the example of the Lord's prayer and said our father that's mm -hmm. step one mm -hmm. our father and we have to stop and meditate on that think about that our father who are we talking to so you, you don't say it real quick our father we're have how to be that mm -mm, that's not gonna get it you have to slow down our father and contemplate that thinking about it, not saying it out loud. Shut up. He's inside. He, he can hear your thoughts. He don't need your voice. That's materialistic. That's why I was saying about churchianity. They say their prayers out loud. That's why they don't get answered. He's internal. So we have to say our prayers internally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we, so we're thinking our father. Step two is who are in heaven. Our Father who are in heaven. Identifying Him. Identify because we could be talking about our daddy mm -hmm. or we could be talking about any Elohim out there. Right. Then, hallowed be thy name. We have to think about that. Blessed be His name. Honor to His name. That's step three. It's like dialing a number on the phone. If we don't dial that number right, you don't know who's going to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. You don't know if anybody going to answer for you. You're going to punch like a child, just punch a bunch of numbers and put it up to your ear, you know, and start talking. Well, nobody may answer. But when you actually dial the number correctly, you go some somebody's going to pick up. Well, when you say when we open our prayers correctly, then we're enter the spirit world where our voices are heard on a spiritual plane. Mm -hmm. So so get this straight. We cover this in videos. So it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Say our prayer the way we want. Whatever we want to ask for, we don't have to worry about getting the words right. Remember, we're thinking and he understands what we want and what we need. So we we didn't got the first part right. We, 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 he understands what our prayer is. And then we close out in your son's name, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call him. You know, if you want to call him the J word, if you want to call him, he's recognized, yeah. you know, but you close out in the son's name. That wasn't covered in the Lord's prayer. Probably because the Lord told us and he didn't, he was real modest and he didn't say close the prayer out in my name. But we have added that understanding that all of our prayers should end with his name. Yeah. So we go through the Lord. We open up like the Lord's prayer, even saying the other elements of the Lord's prayer. Lead us not into temptation. Let your will be done. Food, all of that, along with whatever else we need. And then we close out in our sons in his son's name yeah because our prayers has to go through um his son in order to get to him and you know you covered this in many videos about how the correct way to pray pray and it's also covered in chapter 17 of the third testament yeah, the third testament of the bible covers it um um in great detail and that brings it to my next point the third testament of the bible we talked about the shepherd of Hermas and how it 
teaches us how to conduct our lives in the kingdom of heaven. Well, the third testament of the Bible tells us how to be spiritualized. And that's extremely important. We have to learn how to be spiritualized individuals, meaning we don't concentrate so much on the physical anymore, the terra firma, the hard stuff that we can see, feel, you know, we concentrate on the spiritual things now. And so we have to learn how to pray spiritually. We have to learn, you know, how to communicate with our father. The thing about it, the time we're living in now is the time to learn to live and be spiritualized. If you die and you have not learned to live spiritualized, you're going to be trapped. You're going to be trapped in the spirit world because you don't know how to communicate. You don't know how to act. And so you're going to end up in that dark and confused place that we know as hell. We have to learn to pray. We have to learn to be charitable. We have to learn to be spiritualized. And like I said, we learn that in the third testament of the Bible. That brings the next point is learning the law. Part of being spiritualized is learning the law. That's what the law is for. To teach us how to live as spiritual beings. There's things that we can do in the material that will separate us from our father. Like we said, get a, it can get us cut off. And so anything associated with the law will be quick to do that. Exodus chapter 20 through 23 is the, is the book of the covenant. So what I used to do, guys, when I would find myself in trouble, whether it was arguments inside the house or maybe the neighbor would come over and say something or do something to hurt us, I felt that as a threat, whereas the scripture was telling me that I'm supposed to live unthreatened. Nobody's supposed to be able to touch me. So when I felt myself threatened, I immediately went to the scripture, to the covenant, and tried to find out, okay, what am I doing wrong? If these people are allowed to come over here and hurt me, then evidently I have erred from the covenant and have put myself out here. And sure enough, I would read through the covenant and I will find something in there that I wasn't doing right. Like I said, it's a chisel. And so something will jump out and we will fix that problem and we go on. It's the, the covenant. The um, Like I said, that's Exodus chapter 20 to 23. We would read the Beatitudes. That's Matthew chapter 5 through 7. We would read the uh, seven churches. That's Revelations chapter uh, 2 and 3. We read the Shepherd of Hermas, the commands, um, talk of things. These are all things that we could potentially be doing wrong that's actually making our life harder than it's supposed to be. So that I will go in and read those things, sitting there in frustration, go in and read those things, looking for areas and places that I needed to do in order to improve my life. And it worked. Like I said, it takes a while, but it does work because you find something, you fix it, you go on for a little while and then something else comes up and you fix that. Mm -hmm. Our father is about perfection. You know, he wants us to be perfect like he is, but we're starting off dirty and unclean. And so it takes a little while for us to get right. That's one of the reasons, like you said in the beginning, how this thing takes time. Yeah. It just doesn't happen immediately. Yeah. Once you um, w start walking, you know, into this new way of doing things, it takes time to do this. Yeah. And guys, any time something's going wrong, Think the law. Don't don't be hard headed and thick headed. I'm a coach in this thing, you know, only because I've had some experiences that I think I can help you guys with. And when it comes to the law, learn it quickly, quickly, quickly. Every error that you're doing is causing misery and pain in your life. And it doesn't always appear to be connected. You're breaking this sin over here, but yet you having this ailment over here It's making you sick over here. And there's not a connection. I promise you they're connected. So what you have to do in order to get rid of these ailments, these financial problems, these hardships, these problems from neighbors, these persecutions and all of this other stuff, you have to concentrate on getting the law right because they are connected. We can't see the connection, but if we're breaking this law, it's going to materialize over here as so, a pain. So what you're saying is you basically have to go in and find yourself in the scripture and then start fixing on things. Like I said, the book of the covenant, the Beatitudes, the commands from the Shepherd of Hermas, and probably chapter 16, 17 from the Third Testament of the Bible are the chapters that have very important rules that, that we are expected to follow. There, there's some more scattered throughout the scripture, but those are areas with high concentrations. And so you focus on those, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you concentrate on those, cleaning that stuff out of your life. 
And you know, that that's if you did that, it's gonna accelerate your process of getting to a peaceful state. My point is, is if it takes you a long time to clean that stuff out of your life, you are going to have a rough go at it. It's going to be trouble on you. You know, the kingdom of heaven must be earned. Ain't nobody about to get in here dirty. Everybody going to be clean in the kingdom of heaven. When we get to the other side, everybody's going to be clean. Everybody's going to know the law. Everybody's going to know the calendar. Everybody's going to know how to pray. Everybody's going to be spiritualized. So we have to get on it now while we have time. Else, we could end up in hell. Trapped in a spirit world. Not knowing what to do. Other thing, like I said, these are random. But another thing I want to talk about is angel recognition. Our, the angels are around us, guys, and they are helping us on a daily. The problem is we don't recognize them. You know, we thinking we doing stuff. That was luck, or somebody told me this, or I don't know where that. Can. These are angels, guys. Yeah. And when we say stuff like that was luck, or I don't know how that happened, we are actually denying them. This angel has done this thing to protect or help us or to provide for us. And instead of giving him credit, we just say it was luck or somebody did it or I don't know. You know, we're not giving credit. The problem with that is that we're not helping our brother. If I come to you and I have the same problem that you have and you tell me and you ask me, how did I fix it? I don't know. It just fixed itself. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Just hope it fixes itself. But what if I told you that? I had angelic help with that. Right. Now you're going to start looking for your angelic help. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the plan. You know, that's why you hear preachers and stuff who, who will, it's like the only real thing they say out of their mouth most of the time is praise God, praise the Father, praise Abba. It's like that's all they talk about all day long. Praise, praise, praise. Well, that's because that's the first thing you learn, at least me. That's the first thing I learned when I read the New Testament is if you praise him first, he will guide your steps. So that's what that preacher is doing. He is he is giving the angels credit for things that are going on in his life for the sole purpose that the angel will come and actually steer his life. See, we, we have it backwards. We think that we are supposed to wait for the father to do something for us. And once we recognize that he's done something for us and it's undeniable, it's a certified miracle, then we'll say, praise father, he did something for me. That's not the way it works. The scripture way it reads is we praise first, then he acts. Not the other way around. That's important to understand. You just need to understand that. Mm -hmm. We praise him even when there's no recognition of what's going on. Anything good that happened, you give him praise. Anything bad that happened, you give him praise. Anything that's neutral, you just give him praise. And it's like once you start doing that, the angels hear it. And they're like, oh, okay, well, let's go over here and let's make some good things happen for him. If he's going to give us credit, Makes make sure we get credit for good stuff and then they actually start helping you so that you can actually be a testimony for others. When they come and say, how did you survive that? And you say, the angels helped me, this, that, and the other. Now they go off with some hope thinking, wow, you know, I got a guardian angel too, mm -hmm. you know? And so then it, you know, motivates them to actually want to become spiritualized. That's, the, that's how this works. Right. If you deny them, why would they help you? Why, why would they do anything for you if you actually denying them saying, you know, it was luck or something? Right. Anyway, now, the last thing on my list, guys, is toothpaste. <laughs> okay. We are supposed to bring a harvest. Everybody is required to bring a harvest to the kingdom of heaven, whether it be your family, whether it be some people out in the YouTube world, some people you the street preach. Everybody, just like the Messiah deal, we are expected to grab a have a handful of people in order to present to the Passover, or to present to the Father, or to say, "Hey, I've helped this person. I brought this person here. Here they are." Mm -hmm. Well, I think toothpaste can interfere with that. Can interfere with your harvest. Could actually interfere with the work that you're doing. Actually, make you not actually get out there and actually help people. Okay. Well. Well, I told this in another video and I didn't actually publish it, but and I, I just try to get this as a quick testimony. About seven years ago, when we first got here, Stacy, you told me about fluoride toothpaste. Mm -hmm. You told me that, you know, it was somehow affecting our brains and this, that and the other. Right. And I did a little bit of research and found out what you were saying was true. And I decided to stop using fluoride toothpaste. Mm -hmm. And for a while, 
like I said, that was seven years ago. I just brushed my teeth with uh, Listerine, brushed my teeth with baking soda, anything to keep from using fluoride toothpaste until you came and, you know, told me about the Toms right. and the fluoride free toothpaste. And I started using that. Well, like I said, that was over the course of about seven years. Well, in the last month, two months, I noticed that my teeth started feeling a little rough. They actually literally start feeling like gravel. You notice how your teeth, you, you, when, you, when you take your tongue across your teeth, it feels real slick and smooth? Yeah. That's fluoride. Fluoride has hardened your teeth. Well, if you stop using fluoride, I've learned it takes years, but your teeth you loses that hardness. Mm, it becomes sort of soft. Kind of like gravel, a little rough. Mm -hmm. And so when I noticed this, I said, you know what? This may be the toothpaste. So I started using toothpaste every day, the, the fluoride toothpaste every day. Right. The problem with that was the video stopped. When I started using fluoride toothpaste every day, I went from making two or three videos a week to no interest in making videos at all. I remember that. <laughs> to sit there, I literally went from studying all day, making, wanting to put out a video, to sitting there watching random TikTok videos. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there thinking, and then I, 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 I realized that it could be this toothpaste, so I stopped mm -hmm. using the toothpaste and went back to non-fluoride toothpaste. That's the only thing that had changed. The only thing that had changed, and then the videos turned back on. So I say that to say, guys, this toothpaste may be shutting us down for real. I know they get out there in the science world saying it, you know, but, but there's another thing to actually physically experience it. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is by using a fluoride-free toothpaste, um, the toothpaste that doesn't have fluoride, you are able to um, concentrate on scriptures, doing videos, such and such. But once you... Um, started using the toothpaste with fluoride you tend to have wanted to to slow down and shut it down and shut it down mm -hmm. the youtube ministry stopped there was no videos coming out and even i think i put out one but it was forced and it was messed up and yeah and i just stuck it on up there because there was nothing else up but the video stopped so what do you do do you just what stop let your teeth feel like gravel or what what would you Remember suggest you asked me that you told me mm -hmm. i was going to have to make the choice between <laughs> <laughs> having, YouTube. what'd you say i think i said having no teeth or no subscribers <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah so well i don't it's still kind of early but what i ended up doing i now brush my teeth with fluoride once a week <laughs> <laughs> like i'll make a video and then after i'll make the video then i'll go brush my teeth Knowing that it may be a few days before I get to make another one. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it seems like something is to this. But the reason why I bring this up, guys, is this fluoride may be shutting down you guys' ministry. Mm -hmm. It may be why some of you haven't broken off into getting your own harvest because this fluoride is calcifying your pineal gland, mm. make, cutting off your spiritual connection with our Father so that he's not able to send this information directly to you that you can now share with other people. They using the fluoride to sever the connection. Mm -hmm. That's what we've heard mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. But like mm -hmm. I said, it's one thing, it's another thing to actually experience it firsthand, and I believe I did. Right. Mm -hmm. So you guys check that out. But I believe that's all we wanted to talk about on our little bitty list here. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> well, um, and like now you see why I didn't want to put the scripture up for each one of these. Well, right. that's some good information, you know, especially, you know, uh, the things you said about the Sabbath day, the laws, uh, the traditions of church, um, all of that was very good information, especially for those that are new coming into Israel. Um, I think they needed to hear this information. Yeah, and don't let nobody tell you you ain't Israel. Israel is a mm -hmm. spiritual name. Mm -hmm. the, the physical man's name was Jacob, the guy that had the kids. But once he started, um, once he went through the promises of Jacob, mm -hmm. once he, you know, said, you know, he would obey the Sabbath day and make it a, a delight and he would follow, his name was changed to Israel. Well, that's the same way with us. And so don't let nobody tell you that them, uh, I cannot see Jews over there in Israel is, is, is they, they, they're not Israel. That's, that's a religion, you know, that's a religious group. And there may be some people in that religious group that are Israel, but the entire group of people is not Israel. That's just a religion. Mm 
Right. You know, and so we have to recognize us as Israel as those who actually will keep the keep the commands, keep the promises of Jacob. That's what you know it boils down to it. If you keep the promises of Jacob, you get transform into a spiritualized individual and mm -hmm. become Israel. Right. We are Israel. Bloodline Israel or not. Right. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and close that video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And Shalom. Shalom.